actually already done this a little bit. It's uh, pretty intuitive for some people, uh, at least the first part of this. Now, the idea is using logs to make your derivative life easier. And there are two cases where you do this. Uh, and they're really, there are log rules for different purposes here. Remember on y equals 2 to the x, which we learned how to take the derivative on in set 72, I think it was. Uh, how do we do it? Before you knew the rule and memorized the rule, you kind of did this in more of a, a thinking it through way. What did you do? Okay, well, an intuitive person might think something like, well, shoot, the title of this lesson is logarithmic differentiation, so maybe log has something to do with it. So why don't you say, I took a log. That's great. Okay, so if we take a log, oops, we have to do that to both sides. I'll just say one more time that if you ever say, I multiply both sides by a log, you and I are going to step outside because you're an idiot. Okay? <laughs> uh, now, it's a process. It's, an, it's not a thing to be multiplied by a pair of them. So why did you do that? You, you did that 100% so that you could use that log rule that allows you to move the exponent down. That got us going. And then we used implicit differentiation, um, differentiating both sides with respect to x. And like we just talked about, implicit differentiation means when you have a chain rule in a different variable, you have to take the derivative of that variable. So what's the derivative of log of y using good chain rule implicit differentiation? What's the derivative of the outside? 1 over y. What's the derivative of the inside? New idea. Boom. Okay? Log of 2, is that a function or a number? And do I need to use the product rule? No, I don't need to use the product rule because that's just a number. It's just a coefficient. So I leave log of 2 out front. And what is the derivative of x with respect to x? It's just 1. I don't need to sweat the, the chain rule here because the x the x. So it's just 1, right? All right. If I then move that a little dy dx is y times the log of 2. And then my last step then is I replace y back with what it was to begin with, which is 2x. All right. That's how we did that back in the day. Now, we're going to use that same idea to find a derivative of y equals x to the x. This is a little different because the base is also varying. It's not like a constant 2. It's a variable base. But the same technique works. If we take the log of both sides, that allows us to bring the exponent down. Log of y equals x times the log of x. Now I can implicitly differentiate both sides with respect to x. The left side is just like we did above. What's the derivative of with respect to x of log of y? 1 over y dy dx. Now, the right side's a little different here because we can see that instead of log 2, which is constant, now we have log x, which is very good. So we do need the product rule here. What is the product rule derivative of the right-hand side? Corey, hit me. Derivative of the product rule, go. Wonderful. Plus... There you go. Boom. Okay. So product rule, just like that. Uh, and we're still going to isolate dy dx. So we're going to have two components to our final answer. The first will be the derivative on the right stuff cleaned up. So 1 plus log of x, yay. And the second component will be when I move that y over, we'll be replacing y with what it was, which is x to the x. Are you with me? I'm okay if you do that in one step. Move the y over and replace. You tracking? All right. Um, you try then. Try these first three. That's that fourth one. I don't think that's value added. I'll be walking around. Let me know if you need clarification.
with respect to you. Are you with me? Secant squared of u. So are you getting something like dy du is cotangent of u over u minus 
log of u cosecant squared of u. All of that times cosecant cosecant squared of u all times the y, which was mu to the cotangent of u. Do you follow? Okay. I don't have time for this. I need to get to the last example. So let's call it here. All right. The second use of log is to take something that's just a stinking nightmare and make your life easier. So can you imagine taking a derivative of that? It's got the quotient rule. It's got a product in the top. It's got chain rule in the top. It's got product in the bottom. It's got chain rule in the bottom. It's a mess. Are you with me? If you use logs, you make your life so much easier. If I take the log of both sides, then all of that stuff in the numerator, or in that right side, I can blow into little pieces using log rules. For example, isn't there a log rule that says the log of AB is the same as the log of A plus the log of B? And isn't there another rule that says if you have something with an exponent, that I can bring that exponent down. And if it's subtraction, if it's in the denominator, I can call it subtraction. So this could be rewritten as log of x minus 2 to the half plus log of 2x squared plus 1 minus log of 4 minus x, because it's dividing, it's in the denominator, and minus log of sine of x. And that half, I would actually bring that down so it's even easier. Now I can take the derivative, and although it's long, it's much easier. Right? Yeah. 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 Then take so little derivatives using the chain rule in these cases here. Simple is better. We can't include too much detail on the teacher. If you assign fixed, you will win a $50 Starbucks gift card. Designs must be in the front office by February 20th. Like before, you have to college visits are gearing up fly over and this week is busy with four colleges visiting for a seven hour starting today. But for California Polytechnic State University, Okay, Katie, please today or tomorrow because we didn't get to the question. And I have a piece that jumps out for Katie anyway, so I'll take it away. That way I'll give you a few days to get questions and answers. Starting the voice voting and dieting. This week, join us for the outtake and information on Wednesday, February 13th at 6 30 p.m.